If you have your Android Studio ready, let's begin. I will start a new Android Studio project with the empty activity selected. I'm gonna name it Cafe 50. I'll be sure that the package name looks good and the sale location is good. Language is Kotlin and minimum SDK is API 21. After clicking finish, let's wait for Android Studio to take care of everything and let it index the project. After everything is settled down, let's close this main activity KT and go to activity main XML. You will see these red parts will go away after Android Studio finishes indexing the project and, and loads everything correctly. Okay, cool. I'm gonna enter presentation mode. and start by deleting this constraint layout and replacing it with a relative layout. As you might remember, in the last video, we decided to use a relative layout as the root view. We can remove this text view and also this unused line. If you look at our view hierarchy, we know that we have a linear layout as the first child of this relative layout and a button as the second child. Let's start with the button since it is easier than doing the whole linear layout. Button should be matching its parent with its width and we can use rep content height for now. And our button says order now. You can see that our order now button is purple. We can copy this color using Figma and paste it as background tint. As you might remember, we were changing the background color of a button with background tint. And also we need to change the text color to white. And lastly, we can add some padding to make our button a bit bigger. Looks cool. Let's go back to linear layout. As you might remember, we decided to use three relative layouts inside this linear layout. And this linear layout should be a vertical one. So I'm going to add orientation vertical and add our first relative layout. After we implement this relative layout with the inner contents, we can copy and paste it for the second and third row. So layout width should be match parent and layout height can be wrap content. I'm gonna use again opening and closing tag combo because I want to add more views inside this relative layout. Let's add the image views and the text views. For now I'm gonna use wrap content, wrap content, but I'm gonna check from Figma the exact dimensions so that I can replace it. And also I will need to get the image from Figma so that I can put it here into the image view. But for now, I'm going to just close this image view tag and add two text views again with rep content and rep content. To easily copy a block of code, I'm going to use duplicate key shortcut, which is command D on my machine. So I have one more text view here. Let's go back to Figma. See the dimensions here. As you see, this image is a 120 to 120 dp image. So I can use the same dimensions. 120 dps, 120 dps. Ah, by the way, we forgot to align our button to the parent. So let's go back to the button and use align parent button to true. You can use this attribute because we are actually inside a relative layout button is a direct child of this relative layout okay our image view is well sized so we need to get the image and use this menu here to export the images i want i'm gonna need uh, the pudding the lemonade the pizza for now so i'm gonna export them so that I can copy this and I'm going to paste them here. 
now I can use pizza image here as the source of this image view cool and for the text views I can copy the text from Figma again this is not sponsored by Figma but Figma is one of my favorite design tools because everything is so practical let me paste the text here and for the second text view let me get this description from here and use it here you can see that since this is a relative layout if you don't align anything everything shows up on top of each other so to deal with this problem we can use the alignment attributes to use the relative alignment attributes we need to give the children IDs so I'm gonna start adding IDs here this image view I can name pizza image and this text view I can use ID pizza title for the third one I think we can skip for now because we won't be referring to this text view here in the pizza title I can say to end of pizza image same here for this third text view after I do that you can see both of them move to the right of or to the end of pizza image also I want my description text to be below of the pizza title so again if you know this attribute layout below pizza title the current alignment looks good but we need to add some spacings so to get how much spacing I need to put I will go to Figma again zoom in a little bit and see that these text views are 16 dp away from the image and this text view is is about 20 dp is far away from top so using odd numbers is usually not good I'm gonna use 20 instead so let's put all these spacings to our text views instead of putting two different margins on two different text views what I can do is I can add one margin end to the image view to push both of these text views and for the pizza title I can add a margin top 20 dps also let me check the spacing between the text views as you can see it's around 10 uh, but it's safe to use 8 dps here I usually like to use 2 dps 4 dps 8 dps 16 24 and 32 <laughs> Uh, so that it uses some kind of grid system so instead of using 10 I'm gonna use 8 margin top 8 dp cool uh, now the spacings and alignments looks okay I need to play with the stylings of the text let's check the font sizes of each individual text view and again using Figma I can see that this text uh, is this big so I'm gonna use 24 SP as the size of this text view checking for the description text I saw that it is 14 SP and the 14 SP is the default size so I don't need to change it but I noticed that the colors are a bit different so pepperoni pizza here the pizza title is pure black but with some opacity we know how to change it to pure black but we haven't seen how to change opacity so let me apply the color first using text color and now to change the opacity to 0.87 I need to use a different attribute we haven't seen and that is alpha alpha attribute is common for all of the views so you can use it for all and I'm gonna put 0.87 and this text here again have 0000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 but uses 60% alpha text color again pure black six zeros and alpha this time is 0.60 okay cool now that we dealt with the first row we can safely copy and paste the whole row 
I want to show you something so that we, we don't mess up our screen. But for that, I need to exit the presentation mode. And I can zoom in a little bit instead. Uh, as you might notice, there are some expand and collapse buttons here with each tag. So if you use these, you can see an overview of how your XML is looking. For example, you can easily notice that relative layout has a linear layout and a button as children. And in linear layout, again, if I collapse, we have one linear layout. So I can copy this linear layout when it's collapsed and paste it here. See? We have some errors and it's normal because we copied the IDs of the views uh, as well. But in one single XML file, it's not valid to use uh, the same ID for multiple views. So we will go ahead and change the IDs for the second and third row. Let me check Figma again and see the second row is lemonade and third row is pudding. I can change this image to lemonade image and this title to lemonade title. And as soon as we do that, you can see the error underline went away because now this is unique and it's not repeated. But since we changed this, I also need to change the reference here and here and lastly here okay and also for the third row i need to replace all the pizza to pudding and there is a short shortcut for that uh, i like shortcuts so on max if you use Control g selecting one block of text it will match the next occurrence with each keystroke. So Control G, Control G, Control G, Control G, and Control G. So these are the pizza texts I need to replace into pudding. So doing that automatically change the image as well because also we change the source here. Uh, let's let's change the source of this image view into lemonade. And let's change the texts as well. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know if you noticed it, but we forgot to put uh, a padding here so that these views can go and match the parent without any spacing on the right hand side. To fix this problem, uh, I can add a padding right or padding end to the relative layout rows. And for this one, lastly, padding and 16 dp so you can see that there is this spacing now cool it looks very similar to our figma design but we need to still do some things for example we don't have this spacing here and if i check i can see that there is this 8 dp spacing from left hand side right hand side from top and from bottom and this means it can be handled by adding an 8dps of padding to the outmost relative layout so i'm gonna go to the root relative layout and add a padding of 8dps see and also we have some margin between these two and these two rows and this is again easily be done so let's go ahead and add them as well to see everything better let me collapse yes so i can add margin bottom to first and second or i can add margin top to second and third it's up to you which one you do 
I'm gonna go ahead and add a margin bottom here and to the second. Cool. Uh, but I realized our background color, the white color, is the same background color with each row. But it's not the case here in our design. Our app uses a different background color, F0, F0, F0. And each row has a white background color, which is pure white. So let me change the background color of this relative layout to F0, 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 which is a slight gray. And let me change the background colors of each relative layout. So six Fs to here, here, and here. You might wonder why we don't see the status bar and the app bar. And actually there is an option for that here. If you pick show system UI option, Android Studio will show them to you. But I can see that the colors are not the same colors we use in the Figma design. So let me double check. In Figma, the color code for app bar is this one and for status bar it is this one let me copy the one for app bar and go to colors xml app res values colors xml and change these colors here color primary is used by system to set the app bars color so if i change this it'll automatically change the app bar color if the app bar is outside of your XML file and being generated automatically. And color primary dark is used to change the color of the status bar. So I'm gonna copy this color code here and paste it here to change the status bar's color. Now it looks pretty much the same with the design. To be sure, let's go ahead and run this app. Here is my app in the emulator and let me open Figma here to see them side by side. To my eyes, they look pretty much the same. I think we did a great job transferring a design into a real Android application. See you in the next video where we add the scrollable behavior and the last two items. We learned lots of theory so far and I'm very excited to say that now it's time to apply all this knowledge into practice by creating a real application. What you see in my screen is a screen design. I use figma.com to create this user interface and uh, it represents a hypothetical app for an imaginary cafe called Cafe 50. Building projects or practice of any kind is really important because it reinforces the knowledge we learned and make us remember what we learned, okay? So it's very important doing real coding. So please do not only watch how I code this project, but open up your Android Studio and you code with me, okay? This is how you will learn all this information, all this knowledge and remember all this knowledge. With this project Cafe 50, we won't only recap and remember what we learned, but we will also build upon the things we learned and learn even more concepts and learn even more things. So let's see what we have here. So these screens, uh, actually it, is, it represents one single screen, but I created two different versions of it. One is a simple three item uh, screen. The second one has two more items, but since it doesn't fit in one single screen, we need to implement a scrollable mechanism so that uh, users can scroll the screen to see all of the elements. What we're gonna do in this project is we will transfer this UI designs into XML so we can see this app comes to life 
in our device or in an emulator. This experience of transferring some UI design from a design tool to the actual app will be a part of your daily work when you start working in a company as an Android developer. This is why it's exciting. It's a part of what professional Android developers do. And since you have learned a bunch of concepts, now you're ready to start doing some professional work. I said that I created two different versions of the screen. We will start by the first one and then move to the second one. But it, the only difference is the second one is scrollable. We can focus on the first one now. So to understand different components of the screen, let's break down what we see on the screen. The screen design consists of different parts. Let's see them one by one. So this you see on top is called the status bar. This is, you may, you may already know uh, where users see the clock, the battery percentage or the Wi-Fi status and others. This is not really the part of the app, but Android provides a way uh, to the app developers to change the color of status bar. And the second one is the app bar. This is part of our app but it is not necessarily part of our XML file. So with the XML file, you design the rest of it, but as an app developer, you have control over what you show in this app bar. You can also design it by, by yourself in an XML, but for now, we will assume this is not included in the XML file, but this is created by system automatically. And this is what you're already experienced with. This is a linear layout. You already know how to create this kind of vertical layout, but you might think, okay, but how can we uh, create the inside of each row? So my suggestion is we can, we can create three different relative layouts, one for each row and put the linear layout outside so that linear layout aligns these relative layout one by one in a vertical fashion and each relative layout can align this image view here and these text views there and lastly we have a button here this is also strange because it is not inside of this linear layout and it is not inside of any relative layout so maybe we can create another relative layout and put to the outmost position so that we can align this button to the parent button and the rest can stay on top i know it's it's too much but let's let's see all of those in a graph so this relative layout the biggest one will be our root. The relative layout in the outside will have two different children. The first one will be this linear layout and the second one will be the button. And this linear layout will have three relative layouts and each relative layout will have one image view and two text views. I know that this is rather a complicated uh, view hierarchy but don't forget this is an exercise so that I, I want to do lots of nesting and I want to put lots of uh, layouts into our XML file. There are even simpler representations of the screen uh, not using this much of nested layouts. But since this is an exercise, we can create a hierarchy like this. Now we can go to Android Studio and create this app together. Please open up Android Studio and follow me in the next video. In the last video, we built the simple version of the screen. Now it's time to add two more rows and make the screen scrollable. I'm going to start by exporting these two images because I will need them. File and export. Deselect all of it and select the ones I need. The salad and the watermelon. Since in Figma I haven't named these files correctly, uh, the outputted files need to be renamed. So I'm going to rename this to watermelon and the other 
to sell it. I'm going to copy these two and paste them into app res drawable folder. Now that they are here, I can copy and paste the relative layouts. As you might remember, I had three of them. So I'm going to copy this and that and change this into salad and watermelon. Salad image, salad title, change the references as well, salad image, salad image, and salad title. And also the last one should be watermelon. So watermelon image. Watermelon title. Watermelon image. Image. And watermelon title. Cool. Now I have five relative layout inside this linear layout but as you can see there's been some problem since my screen is not enough to fit all of them the last row is squeezed and cannot display all of the views so for these kind of problems the solution is using a scroll view scroll view is a view that enables us to scroll through a view group and can simply edit here to outside of linear layout with match parent width and wrap content height and since this needs to wrap the linear layout we want to scroll you need an opening and a closing tag and I will place linear layout inside so now this is the final hierarchy I have one relative layout outside and it has one scroll view and a button as its children and inside of this scroll view I have one linear layout and you know the rest so if I do that you can see now this becomes scrollable and let me change the images and text for the fourth and fifth row so that you can see better so this is salad image so it needs to show salad and this is watermelon image so it needs to show watermelon also let's change the texts okay let me run this app once more and see if the scroll view is working correctly so here's my app let me zoom in a little bit so as you can see now I can scroll this as a list but there is one problem since this button is overlapping the whole linear layout I cannot see the last item we can implement uh, a number of solutions here but the first thing that comes to my mind is adding some margin bottom to the watermelon pop so that it scrolls a little bit more so this is the last row and if I add some margin bottom let's say 64 dp and rerun the app you can see now I can scroll a bit more because I have a margin cool now we have a list of five items that we can scroll and the last item is visible because we added some margin to the bottom of the last element cool I think we completed this project see you in the next video Thank mm -hmm. you.